Hello there. Today we're going to solve question number four from the May June 2022 paper 2 1. Other videos, other questions are already uploaded on our YouTube channel, so go check them out if you wish to. Equa is a trader who sells household furnishings. She has provided the following information. Seems like that's the closing value because, I mean, the closing date because we have the opening date over there. So at the end of the year, we have some closing inventory some uh, trade receivables and all, all that so it's best if you first label because there are only a few items current assets current assets current liabilities current liabilities and these are just self-defining uh, all sales and purchases are on credit okay that may be needed later on inventory the opening inventory is also provided and that's your closing inventory fine number one they need the gross margin now for the gross margin, what you do is you take the gross profit over, you take the gross profit over sales revenue. Okay. So to do that first, you need to find your gross profit, which is gross profit in this case is um, sales revenue, one, one, two, three hundred minus the, uh, cost of sales isn't it and the cost of sales in this case is open inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory so opening inventory is uh, 12800 plus purchases 72250 minus closing inventory is 14650 Fine, that gives you revenue minus cost of sales, which of course is your gross profit. Let's just calculate that. One one two three hundred minus in the bracket twelve eight hundred plus seventy two two fifty minus fourteen six fifty. Close bracket. It's forty one nine hundred. That's your gross profit. How do you find gross margin? You just take the gross profit divided by the sales of 112, 300. And, uh, well, that should give you the answer. Times that by 100, don't forget, because it's in percentage. So 41,900 over 112, 300, times by 100, 37.31. So the answer is 37.31. Three, one round it off to two decimal places percent don't forget to put that next we have profit margin for which we need the profit for the year some call it net profit but that word is not used anymore so try using the word profit for the year okay now the profit for the year is well we start with the gross profit you should know this at this stage until the gross profit it's all the same but then for profit for the year, we also deduct the expenses 19,820 minus 19,820. Let's just make sure nothing else needs to be adjusted. No. So profit for the year is 41,900 minus 19,820 is 22,080. Answering the question, the profit margin is 22,080 divided by the revenue. 1112, I mean 112, 300 times 100 because we need the percentage. Okay. By the way, you may give the final answer here without showing it here, but why not? Why not show it in two places for your own, you know, understanding? So that's 19.66. 19.66. Moving on to the next question, rate of inventory turnover in number of times. You should know the formula is cost of sales over average inventory. Cost of sales over average inventory. The cost of sales is, oh, maybe first we can find the average inventory because that's part of the formula. Average inventory is going to be the opening inventory plus closing divided by two. That's just going to be 14,650, 12,800. 14,650, 12,800, 
divided by 2 gives you the average inventory. Let's calculate 14,650 plus 1280, I mean 12,800, sorry, divided by 2 is 13725. That's your average inventory. How do you calculate rate of inventory turnover in number of times? You take the cost of sales, which we calculated above. We didn't actually calculate it, but we have put the workings. Why not calculate it? It's, that's why, you know, while doing your answers, first do the calculation and then put it in the formulas. Because look, here we put it in the formula. And what happens? We have to do that again, right? So uh, for for sake of this question, I'm just going to add it up. 12,800 plus 72,250 minus 14,650. In the exam, however, it would be better to write that working, okay? Like how you got the cost of sales. Or if you don't do that, at least make sure you give the final figure over here. Like you do one more step where you first find cost of sales, which you will use over here, 7,400. So you take the cost of sales, 7,400, divide that by the average inventory, 13725, you will get the answer. 5.13. Of course, round it off. Should we say percent? Of course not, it's times, it's the number of times. Inventory was essentially replaced, okay? Current ratio and for that we need the current assets and the current liabilities right so our current assets current liabilities what are the current assets we listed above already obviously you won't take the opening inventory it's just the closing inventory which you will take because that's your current asset at the moment at the time of this calculation calculation of this ratio so we have 14,650 and 12,700. And for the current liabilities, we have 5,375, 7,125. I'll add that up. 14,650 plus 12,700. 27350 and uh, 52 sorry 5375 plus 7125 is 12500 next step to find the current ratio you do the current assets over current liabilities see what you get Two point one, one eight eight. So we can say two point one nine, and that's not it. Like essentially, when you, when you solve this, what you're getting in your calculator is this. Okay. So in other words, you can say it's two point one nine is to one. Like that's just the way you do current ratios. Hopefully, you know that. Next, we have the liquid asset test ratio where you ignore the inventory. Okay. So you take the current assets, but without the inventory. So it's just 14,650, if I'm not wrong. No, sorry, that's the inventory. 12,700 is the receivable, that's all we take. 12,700 for the current assets, or let's just say liquid current assets, ignoring the inventory. And uh, the current liability doesn't change. So. 12,700 over 12,500 will be 1.016 or we can round it off to 1.02. Well, you don't have to write it this way. You can directly write it as 1.02 is to 1, but I'm just trying to show you the concept of it. Okay. Fine. I think these were some easy 11 marks, really. We'll move on with this. One of you, cause, sorry, equals, however you say that, uh, suppliers has offered 
to sell her a large invent large quantity of inventory at a reduced price so she's getting a large quantity of inventory at a discounted price fine equa is considering accepting this offer and increasing her expenditure on advertising in order to sell more inventory you get the idea guys so she's getting a discounted price inventory and she's planning to well purchase it and then sell it with more advertising so next the question is advise equa whether she should purchase the additional inventory justify your answer by providing two advantages and two disadvantages as usual i will show you the mark scheme answer at the end but for now think okay pause the video think i'll give you my opinion just a little bit of discussion and then i'll show you the mark scheme answer so what you have to do is find two benefits of having that additional inventory number one we can say we're getting it at a reduced price so we may be able to reduce our selling price as well isn't it and that makes us more competitive that's one way to put it and if we're not reducing the price if we are not getting more competitive by reducing the price at least by maintaining the same selling price and getting the cheaper inventory we will be increasing our margins right our profit margins will go up how do i know that well if the selling price stays the same selling price no change and the cost price reduces obviously the margin the gap of uh, selling price cost price will increase which is of course good for the business right so two advantages covered there one she can be more competitive two she can increase her margin and there will be more you just have to think about it what would be the disadvantage well it's a large quantity so there'll be some storage cost she needs to consider there will be obsolescent risk right the 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 inventory may become obsolete ultimately may may become we don't know for sure um so that's one thing secondly she's uh, incurring expenditure on advertising as well so that's something to consider is the reduced price attractive enough right to be compared with with the expend like does it is it better than her expenditure on advertising what if an advertising expenditure is too much right the expenditure and on advertising is more than the price that was reduced what if that's the case may put that as a disadvantage as a potential problem right and uh, we don't know whether the advertising is going to work so again advertising will add to expenses while we're not sure about the returns of that i think what i just said has enough points in it uh, but since we have limited time here and you know we can't generate as many ideas as the mark scheme already has in it so let's just copy paste the mark scheme answers don't forget in, in questions like these you have one mark for recommendation if you know what i mean at the end you have to recommend what she should do now both answers are correct you may say that she should get the inventory and you may say she shouldn't it's up to you how you justify it as long as you're justifying you're good okay so Please go through these and I hope you understand them, right? Let's go through them, right? A, a few of these points, by the way, will, will be discussed. We, we have already discussed them. Pause the video, make sure you go through them nicely. If you don't understand any given point, well, look more into it and maybe ask in the comments. Either someone or I will be able to answer. Um, at the end, if you notice, it says one mark for recommendation, obviously. So recommendation, super important. Okay. Let's move on. I think so. Explain the meaning of, uh, explain the meaning and importance of the principle of consistency in preparation of financial statement. Number one, you should know what is the principle of consistency. It is where, when we have a choice, right? When we have a choice in terms of let's say, accounting policy like depreciation and we make one choice we should stick with it right so when we for example choose depreciation policy we should stick with it year on year why is that what is the importance the importance is that it helps us 
increase the accuracy of comparisons it makes the statements more comparable we can say okay so it adds a uh, consistency adds to the comparability all right and then of course it is also linked with some other concepts as well but mainly it's about comparability right so consistency is using the same principles year on year same policies year on year to maintain compare com, compare com, or to let's say let's just say to make to, to let the financial statements be comparative year on year okay uh, state two non-financial factors which may affect equals trading results now this is a very logical a very very logical answer to this right so what are the non-financial factors that might affect equals trading results you know COVID-19 happened that was an external factor so we can say uh, external factors such as change in environment right external factors um, such as uh, change in government policies right even in your country you may hear about changes in tax regimes and all that so these are some non and we may also consider um, increase in competition for example right uh, well there's no point in thinking more than two three points all we can do is just copy paste the mark scheme answers here so I have it open on the other tab I will just uh, copy it for you okay by the way uh, you must be able to understand how this answer works on the mark scheme so the thing is this either or means you have to take one statement from there and then either or the second one you have to take one statement from there you get it you can't just give those first two lines as your answer you can't say these two is your answer no you won't you won't get two marks because they the points are same here either accounting either accounting methods must be used consistently from one accounting period to the next or accounting methods should not be changed unless so it's not two marks that's one mark you may choose one of those lines Okay, or something similar to it and then for another mark you need to choose one of these lines so for comparison and so the profit is not distorted see choose either one except choosing both of them will still give you just one mark let's move on uh, this last one as well will will copy paste for better ideas from the mark scheme there you go business reputation oh that, that was obvious because uh, well obviously uh, the reputation of equals business will affect her trading results that's not financial that's just a non-financial factor reliability of workforce actions of competitors government decisions location of business and there'll be more so many logical points you can go on and on and on the whole day and you the list won't finish anyway uh, that's 20 marks everybody we'll be doing the last question in an upcoming video. So stay tuned, take care, have a great day.